Hello. Welcome to my home. My name is Alicia Lofthouse, and this is my ministry, Free at Last Ministries. I love being free at last. Woo! Took me a long time to get here, but God brought me. He brought me all the way. 31 years I've been saved. But I thank God for what he's doing in my life right now. And I'm telling you, I have been seeing things that are happening in this world today that I never thought I'd be seeing. I mean, even out there on the streets and drugs and everything else, I never saw the stuff that I see right now. But anyways, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Moses and God. And um, before we get started, though, I'd like to pray. Little Judy is here with me, my little faithful servant. No, <laughs> she's a good, good friend. Okay, let's say grace. Let's say grace. <sighs> We just finished eating, so that's why I got grace on my mind, but grace is always on my mind. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you, Lord God, with praise and thanksgiving, Lord God. Oh, God, oh, God, open this word up for us, Lord. Open up the meaning, Lord. Help us to understand, to comprehend, Lord God, what you want us to hear. Father, lead us and guide us in this world, this wicked, wicked world that we are living in right now, this perverted, woo, this perverted, ugly mm, world that we are living in, Father. I know that you said that your grace is sufficient for me, Lord God, and, and I'm thankful for that grace. But Lord, there's so many out there that don't know you, that don't have that precious grace, Lord. But I'm praying, Lord, with the sound of my voice that they will hear this message and that they will accept the grace that you have for them by giving you their hearts. God, I love you. I love you. Save us from this wicked world, Lord God, this wicked and adulterous generation. I love you. I love you. I love you. Anoint me, Lord. Anoint me to preach your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Woo. God is so, so good. Oh, I love him. I love him. My pastor preached an excellent message this morning about uh, the things that are going on. She preached about, uh, like in the days of Noah, how the things are uh, going on right now as they were in the days of Noah and that's why God destroyed the earth but because it said it grieves me that I even made man I mean isn't that terrible that God grieved because he made us anyways uh, step back a little bit uh, and then uh, so he destroyed the whole world but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord and then again with Lot Lot uh uh, it said, just like in the days of Lot, they were eating and drinking and building. And that's what they're doing right now. Do you see it? People are eating and drinking and they're building. As soon as something gets knocked down, they put it right back up. I mean, it's a constant building, keeping people from their families, keeping them from home, keeping them from church. I mean, the devil is working hard, let me tell you. Anyways, God is so good and he is still on the throne and he still has that grace that covers the earth if we will only reach for it if we will only ask for it he's there to pour it out abundantly upon us okay so um god was going to destroy three cities sodom gomorrah and this other city i can't think of what it was but uh lot asked them to let him go there. So they said, we were going to destroy it, but for thy sake, we will spare the city. So I, I asked God, oh, for my sake, God, spare the city. Spare the city, Lord. Spare the families. Spare the prisoners, Lord. Spare them, Lord God. Spare the backsliders, God. Woo! Spare them, Lord God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We need to get right with God. We need to come back to God. We need to get on fire with God. Uh, also, she mentioned the scripture about in Revelation where it says, uh, I see that you did this and I see you did this. He's proud of the things that we're doing for him. But he said, there's one thing, though, that you lack, something you don't got. And you're doing all of this without it. You lost your first love with the Lord. Remember when you first got saved, how excited you felt? I know I did. Woo! I started writing poems and putting them up. And I mean, it was just, 
amazing. I couldn't help it. It was just that I fell in love with Jesus. And I know that he fell in love with me. Hallelujah. But um, so we need to get back to our first love. He said that if we are lukewarm, you know, like some people like to go to church on this day and maybe on that day, but oh, wait, I'm going to the beach. Oh, wait, I'm going to my friends. Oh, wait, I got a party. Oh, wait, I, I slept, I, I stayed out tonight and I can't get, I mean, I stayed out too late last night and I just can't get up this morning and excuses, excuses. There's a song that says, excuses, excuses. We hear them every day. And the devil, he'll supply them if the church will stay away. When people come to know the Lord, the devil always loses. So to keep those folks away from church, he offers them excuses. And that's exactly what it is. Satan allows you to think of an excuse to keep you from church. Because that message that was preached today, every single person needed to hear it. We had a lot of people missing today. Why? Because it was an excellent message about coming back to God. Excellent message about getting right with God and about the judgment of God. And whoo, I'm telling you, before I get started, I want to uh, read this song. Oh my goodness, I found it in my Bible. It's called The Judgment. Uh, I believe it was from the Kingsmen. But I love the words, so I'm not going to sing it. I'll, I'll read the words. It says, all is still, heaven is silent, as the mighty judge ascends the throne. The book of life is open, as countless souls begin to moan. Woo! From the throne comes a voice like thunder. Depart, I know you not. For the names written in this book are the souls that my blood has bought. Faces turn as into the courtroom comes the very seed of sin. He who was the saint's accuser, yep, that's right, must face the charges against him. Mm -mm -mm. With the fury of all the ages, this demon voice begins to cry. Uh, it's not fair. I almost had you on Golgotha. I watched you die. Oh, I got chills. Thank you, Jesus. Then Satan begins to tremble. Ooh, as his fate to him was known. From the throne... Come the verdict. The lake of fire shall be your home. Woo! And I see every knee is bowing. Every voice in honor is raised. Now wait, every hand in honor is raised. Every voice to him is lifted. Thou art worthy. The Lamb be praised. Woo! Angels, angels standing at attention as the redeemed, that's us, begin to sing. Heaven's courts resound the anthem. You are our Savior, our Lord and King. As those words are in the courtroom, again, thou art uh, let's see. You are our Savior, Lord and King. And that is exactly what he is to me. My Savior, my Lord, and my King. Woo! That's an excellent song. When they sing it, oh, I just get chills all over. I know my name is in the book of life. I make mistakes, you better believe it. But I'll tell you what, when I make those mistakes, I get right back down on my knees and ask God to forgive me. Well, I can't get down on my knees no more. Just those old creaky things fell on them a few times and now they're anyways but uh I still I sit in my chair and I just worship and worship I say God I'm sorry forgive me God please forgive me because I don't know the time of my appointment that it is appointed unto man once to die and after that the judgment 
And I don't want to stand before God and, and, you know, miss that because I forgot to say that I was sorry because I did something wrong and brushed it off like it was nothing. Jesus Christ deserves, you know, for us to ask for forgiveness. If we don't, that's up to us. But if you don't ask for forgiveness, guess what? He's not going to forgive you. What do you think about that? That's right. And there's a lot of people out there right now that think that it's okay to live the way that they're living. It's okay to sleep with this one or uh, have sex with that one or, you know, go to the bars with this one. And let's drink a few beers. Kids watching you. You're training them up to what to grow into. The Bible says, train up your child in the way they should go. And when they grow old, they won't depart. So what you're doing right now is what your children are watching you do. And trust me, they will grow up to be just like you unless the grace of God, uh, somebody prays for them and they get saved. And hopefully you get saved too. But this is a serious time that we're living in right now. I don't know if you see it. Okay, like I said in the days of Lot, the homosexuality too was just a... A fearful thing. I preached uh, a couple of weeks ago about the cries that went up to God because he, he told Abraham, I'm going to destroy these cities because the cries have come up to my ear. God hears it. He hears when them babies cry. <coughs> Let's forget about that message. It's a good one, but this one's much better. God hears when those babies cry. Matthew 18.10 says, beware. You better watch out. Don't you hurt one of my little ones. And he's talking about the new Christians and these babies. Where I'm his baby. I told my daughter, she's 48 years old. I said, you will always be my baby. And, uh, but it says, beware, lest you hurt one of my little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven, their angels do for ever behold the face of my father which is in heaven and those angels carry back to God although God can see it anyways those angels are there and they're fighting demonic spirits all around these children oh if only your eyes can see with spiritual eyes oh my goodness there are spirits that you don't even know nothing about people read these horoscopes and uh Go and get their fortune told. and Those are spirits. Nobody knows the future but God. You know, unless it's prophesied. You know, if you're in the Holy Spirit and God speaks through you, the Holy Ghost speaks through you, and then it prophesies, then you know. But you go to a fortune teller, those people don't know. They're as fake and phony as the devil. But they get your money, you know. And that spirit enters into you. And you get hooked. Every day you want to read <coughs> what your fortune is. You, uh, I mean, not your fortune. You want to read what your horoscope is. Excuse me, I got you to drink. <coughs> <coughs> Don't get sick, Alicia. Okay, I won't. <laughs> Anyways, um, you read your horoscopes and stuff. Do you remember when King Saul, uh, he ordered that all the soothsayers and the, you know, the people who tell the future, the people who tell you, um, like the horoscopes and stuff, the Bible said that they were to be destroyed. I mean, they had to be destroyed. He, God wanted them dead. They were nothing but liars. And who's the father of lies? Satan. But I tell you what, Saul did not live up to God's uh, will. And he did not live up to the standard of a king. And so anyways, Saul was getting ready to die. Um, Samuel came and told him, you know, that it's going to be taken from you. So anyways, uh, and it says that you and your two sons will die. Or you and your son will die. And I, I'm in a different... <laughs> zone right now but anyways him and Jonathan 
Jonathan was beloved. Oh, by David. Oh, they were such best friends. But anyways, um, so Saul was scared. And so he went and he told them, he said, go find me someone that uh, is a soothsayer, which is a fortune teller, which is tells about the future. So they found a woman and they went and, and she said, uh, you know that King Saul has ordered for us to be destroyed, you know, and not to practice these things anymore. And that per and Saul disguised said, uh, I promise I will not let him know. No one will know. So she brings up the dead, which was Samuel. I'm sorry, Samuel died. So he brings up Samuel and said, and she screams and she said, you're King Saul. And, uh, she knew, you know, that he was the king. So he told her, you're not going to die. You're, I'm not going to hurt you. But tell me what Samuel says. That's what Samuel tells him. You're going to die. You and your son will be in here with me. And um, so anyways, you know, life is so real. People want to disguise it and, you know, to where it's not recognizable. They want to portion it to be just like they want it to be. It's not going to be that way. People are talking and cussing at their parents. Oh my goodness, that's one of the Ten Commandments. That's what I was going to read right there. But, you know, we don't listen to them anymore. To your mother and your father, that's a curse. God said, I put a curse on you. Uh, people get so comfortable without going to church. God will put a curse on you. You know, Satan comes and he puts these spirits on you. And you don't think of it that way because you don't know Satan. And, but you don't know God. I, I wrote this other thing down. Where's my glasses? No, that ain't it. Here it is. Yeah, Satan don't want me to read it. That's the second time it was on the floor, isn't it, Judy? Yeah. I don't know how it got from here to there, but it says, uh, In America, we have become the worst pushers of the gospel. The worst pushers for a deceptive gospel. American Christians are becoming spiritually illiterate. You know why? We're becoming spiritually illiterate because people don't want to read their Bibles. And so when people get up there to preach and everything, no one says amen. They can't agree with it because they never read it. And uh, they go and talk to people about Jesus. They don't know Jesus. They don't know nothing about him because they don't open up the word of God to have a relationship with them. You know, like your best friend, like my best friend, Jane. I can I know everything about her, everything she likes to eat, the movies she likes to watch, you know, all that stuff. Because she's been my friend like 20, 30 years, about 30 years. And uh, so I know what she likes, and that's just like God. He wants that relationship with you. He wants you to know everything about him. Because if you don't, he's going to tell you, depart from me. I never knew you. I never knew you. People try to imitate a Christian, you know, uh, to dress like one and look like one. They're not one. And, and the Bible says that they're known by the fruit they bear. So you can see that if someone's out there smoking cigarettes and cussing and drinking a beer and trying to tell you about Jesus, that, oh, Jesus ain't going to do that. Oh, God ain't going to say that. Oh, you're still going to go to heaven. That's a bunch of hogwash. Don't you listen to them. They're a liar. Satan is their father and he's the father of lies. Those people don't know God. And if you listen to that judgment, you don't, you're, oh my goodness. You need to get away from them. <coughs> we are living in a world right now that needs to hear the truth. That needs to know the truth. You need to read your Bible. Because I'm telling you, the Bible says that many are called, but only few are chosen. Only few. Because there's only a few that want to study the Word of God. Not just read it, but try to figure it out, you know. Like when I first got saved, uh, they were saying, start with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I said, I don't want to start with that. 
I want to start with the beginning, Genesis, because I want to know why. Why did God have to give his son to this earth to allow him to die such a horrible death? Why? Why did he do that? I mean, it broke my heart that God would send Jesus, his only begotten son, to bear the sins of the whole wide world. You know, I wanted to know why. And so I found out why. Rebellion. Rebellion in the home. Rebellion in the church. Rebellion on the streets. <coughs> Abortion. You know, these girls are out there getting things put inside of them and in their arms and everything, saying it's a birth control. Excuse me. No, it's not. It's a murderer. Because they are boarding your babies. Every time you get, you know, uh, a little baby. I'm not going to get into all that because I don't know who's listening. <laughs> Anyways, when you become pregnant, instantly that uh, machine is supposed to cast it out, whatever. But it doesn't always do that right at the minute. Oh, my girl, goodness, girls. If you can only, only search the Bible says, search the scriptures, whether they be true or not. I'm asking you to search. Search those things out. Don't just listen to a doctor tell you what it is or listen to some people on Facebook. They don't know nothing about it. It's abortion. You're killing God's children. You know, it's not God's will that you should have a baby from a man that uh, you're not married to. And especially from a man who's married to another woman. But the babies, God loves them babies. I mean, you were once a baby. You know, you didn't come out perfect, whatever. But God is just saying that you, oh my goodness, abortion is the number one murder in the United States. Around the world, an abortion is a murder. I don't care what they say. Oh, the baby is only three months. Three months, that baby's got a heartbeat, veins, a brain. I mean, they got a body. And you want to destroy that? You're a murderer! You're a murderer! <clears throat> and the only way to be forgiven for that is to get right with God and ask Him to forgive you. Oh my goodness. Sin. 
that was not right in the eyes of God. That's conviction when you feel it deep inside of you that you know it's wrong. <coughs> I used to memorize all these scriptures, but the Bible says, um, for you to know to do good and you don't do it, it's a sin. It's a sin and you will be judged by it and you'll be cursed by it. You need to get right with God. Get on those knees. Call up to God. Cry out to God and ask for forgiveness. I'm telling you, this world is about to end. We've been saying it for forever. We've been saying it forever. But Jesus said in Matthew 24, uh, Mark 13 and Luke 21 said, watch, watch. Because of the signs. Let me read the signs. I didn't know which Bible to get. I'll get the new King James one. I love my Bibles. I'm telling you. Woo! <laughs> Ooh, okay. Thank you, Jesus. Um, Matthew, Matthew. I mean, Luke. Not Matthew. Matthew, Matthew, Matthew. When I first read this, I was I felt like he was coming just any minute. Just any minute. And 31 years later, I still feel that. I feel like he's coming any minute. And the more I see the world, the way that it's turning and the way it's getting, I know he's coming any minute. Okay. Now, as he said in the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the world? You hear this? It's in the Bible. If you would open up the Bible, you would see this for yourself. But you listen to somebody say it and you say, oh, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Well, you don't have to believe it. Because when you stand before God and burn in hell for all eternity, you'll believe it then. There is a, a thing that said, eternity is a long time to be wrong. Think about that. And Jesus answered and said to them, take heed, be careful, be watchful. That no one deceives you. That no one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying that I am the Christ. And will deceive many. And you will hear of wars. Okay, those who that come and say that they are Christ. They're saying that they know the way. I, not that they are Christ, but that. I know him so intimately that I know what he wants for you. And they will give you some upwashed stuff that has nothing to do with God. You know, uh, like Catholics, I know this one uh, Catholic woman who's on a thing. She went all the way down into the cloisters. She said that when she uh, wanted to give more of her life, they came to her because they seen that she was an RN. They trained her to be an RN. And they wanted her to go even deeper into the dungeons where they didn't get no food. They had to do all these things. But the first thing they did was she would go into this room and a priest would come in there and, and try to have sex with her. And she said, what's the matter with you? No, I will not. And she got beat for it. They shave off their heads and, and they put her head underneath a, a spigot of water and let it drip. Drip, drip, and tied her up and kept her like that for forever. Oh my goodness. They stripped her clothes and they beat her like they did Jesus. Woo! Beat her, beat her, beat her. Put her clothes back on her with the bloody uh, things or insides hanging out and everything. And then when she go, when they're done with her and she goes to the room, they strip, ow! They strip those clothes back off of her. Man, shut up, devil. I'm telling it anyway. So anyways, uh, it's, it's just a whole lot. A whole lot to get into. I, I bought 
a Catholic Bible. I didn't buy that. Somebody sent that to me. And I can't believe all the things they have in there about Mary. Mary, the mother of God. First of all, God doesn't have a mother. Jesus has a mother and she is honored and she has a special place for her. But you praying to her is not going to get you closer to God, not going to get you closer to Jesus. For Jesus himself said, who he said, they said, your mother's calling for you. And he said, who's my mother and who's my brother? He said, he who does the will of my father, that's my mother, my brother and my sister. So he's saying that don't, you know, yes, take care of my mother, honor my mother. But she has nothing to do with you getting to heaven. Nothing. And they'll pray more to her with these beads and stuff than they do to Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes before the Father except through me, except through Jesus Christ. That's deception out there. Oh, my goodness. Where's that little paper I was going to read? Or did I read it? Anyways, I'm going to read it again. In America, we have become the worst push pushers for a deceptive gospel. You hear me? I just told you something about it. I started to get rid of it. And I said, no, I want to study that thing so that when I talk to somebody that's a Catholic, whatever, I'll be able to explain stuff to them. Because they probably don't even read the Bible. Oh, my goodness. Uh... American Christians are becoming spiritually illiterate because we don't read the Bible. Discernment is gone. Discernment is knowing, you know, understanding the wisdom of knowing that that's a lie and this is the truth. Mm, 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 mm. People don't know their Bible. Because we have a new age moment, a uh, movement, uh, sorry. We have a new age movement. I lost my teeth this morning, the bottom ones, and I wasn't going to preach because I said, I, I'm not going to do that. First of all, that's vanity. Second of all, it's uh, a lie from the devil because I'm going to preach anyways. Ow. There was at one time I didn't have any bottom teeth. And I just kept on preaching when I first started this four years ago or whatever, when COVID first came out. Okay, uh, it's a new age mo movement, and they got all kinds of Bibles out there. Any kind of Bible you want. The new international version, the new uh, English standard I mean, oh, please, just go out there and pick up what you want and, and just say how much it, it ministers to you and everything. Anyways, any false doctrine, any deception, even a witch can come in and deceive you. Even a witch, and you don't even know it because you've got no discernment. You don't know. She's talking about God. She's talking about prophecy. She's talking about everything. And you just think, oh, she's anointed. She's from God. Woo! Wee, wee, wee. You know, and it's not. It's a witch come to deceive you. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, don't even trust me. Don't trust me. I'm not going to get you to heaven. I'm just going to help you try to get there. But you read the word of God. I don't ever tell you, listen to me, listen to me. I preach Jesus and him only. Him crucified, rose from the dead, and being up on, in heaven, interceding for us. He prays for us. And it says that uh, she comes in and deceives you, or he, whatever, warlock, and there is no protection in deception. God cannot protect you. If you believe in all those lies, you have to come out. You have to come out. The Bible says separate yourself. Come out from among them. Be separate from them. Woo! Have no fellowship with them. For fellowship with a liar and someone who knows the word of God, they have no friendship. 
You know, I try to minister to this one girl. I love her with all my heart, but I tell her and, you know, explain to her. She's come to church before. She's felt the presence of God, tears flowing down her. That's conviction. But there are other things that are more important to her than coming to church and hearing the word of God. I can't help her. I can't help her because if she does that, I can't judge her. God will. Well, I still love her. Sure, I still love her. I still help her out. But anyways, let's see the rest of it. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. This is when the end will come. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines. You know what famines are? It's when there's no food. When the food prices go up so high and then they take the food away from you. Pestilence. That's diseases. I thought it meant bugs. <laughs> One day I just happened to look it up and I said, diseases? Pestilence? Pestilence is diseases. And how many diseases do you think this world has right now? I mean, everything. I call up to uh, ask about my medicine. They got it ready. And I have to listen to an operator telling me that uh, if I want to talk about COVID, press number nine. And then it'll say they have 19, uh, oh, what do they call it? 19 um, remedies, whatever, for COVID. Choose this one or choose that one or that one and plus get the booster and plus get this. Excuse me. I'm going to trust in God. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. I got the COVID, but I got healed. <laughs> it came and it went the way it's supposed to go. Just like a cold or a flu. Oh, please. Uh, yes, I know that people have died. Even good Christians, anointed, gospel-believing on fire, pastors and preachers have died from COVID. I know that. I'm just saying that this world puts too much in to the, the game of these things. They made millions and billions off of this disease. They, they sold gloves and masks and all that stuff. And it was all about people not wanting to be near people. That's Satan. That's what he wants. He doesn't want us fellowshipping with each other. They closed down the churches. They closed down the schools. They closed down everything because they didn't want you to get it. But yes, there are a lot of people who died and I'm so sorry. Even good people and bad people. Just so many. <coughs> Anyways. They, they worry about that, but they don't care about the abortion, you know? They don't care about the abortion. People give a voice, but if you didn't vote for it, if you weren't out there talking to somebody about it, if you don't do anything about it, you don't have a right to complain. You don't have a right to say nothing about it because those unborn babies need you now. They need you praying for them before they're even... Uh, delivered or aborted. Anyways. Uh, and there will be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. Well, when you have an earthquake, what happens? It opens up. The earth opens up and takes everything. Your houses get flat. The food gets flat. The stores. The land is destroyed by the floods and the animals and all that mixing together with the stuff you planted to feed the nation. And so here comes diseases and stuff, you know, and you can't eat that stuff. So you got to call in and get some other stuff. And oh my goodness. And there goes more money. There goes more money. They're paying the farmers to destroy some of their land. I couldn't believe when I heard them. And I asked this other person that I know real well. And he said, yeah, they paid him. They said they would pay him too. 
I didn't ask him if he did or not, but yeah, the government is asking farmers to destroy part of their land. You can still grow, just don't grow that much. Famines. Yep. Earthquakes in various places. How many places have you heard that at the same time, different places have had earthquakes of mass destruction? I mean, people have died, buried under buildings, uh, fires, and oh my goodness. It's all going right now. Not, I mean, it always has been. Earthquake there, earthquake there, but this is all happening now. Ooh, the tornadoes. Have you ever seen that? Tornadoes like this before? No, you have not. That just come through. I mean, this is Paducah, Kentucky. You know, Mayfield is right down the street from us. And that whole city was just... Like God just slapped that land. You rebellious people. You don't listen. You refuse to listen to me. I'm not, anyway, you have to take your own opinion. I'm not going to tell you that I'm sorry for that because I'm not sorry. We have to do this. We have to warn you. And all these things are the beginnings of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. Okay, a lot of people stop serving God because of this, because they think, oh no, they're going to come and they're going to know I'm a Christian. Let me tell you a story that I had in this Bible, this Max Ducato study Bible. Oh, it was so beautiful. These uh, people were hiding because it was like in Romania or Germany or something like that. But they had to hide to have church. Well, these two soldiers busted in and I mean, they're waving their guns at everybody. And they said, whoever doesn't want to die, you denounce Christ and leave. And they did. And they left, but still some stayed. And when those people left, they turned around and said it again. Said, we're not playing. Said, if you don't want to die, you better renounce Christ and live. And more people left. But there were children, wives, husbands, grandparents, aunts, uncles that stood there. And they were not afraid to die for the sake of Christ. They were standing for him. You know why? Because he stood for them. He died for them, so they were dying for Christ. And so when nobody would leave, they went over there and closed the door and locked it. They took their guns and they put them down. They took off their hats and they took off their coats. And they said, we have come to worship with you. But we had to make sure that the ones that weren't really serving Christ were gone because they would have turned us in and we would have lost our lives. But these people wanted to worship. You know, they were willing to die for that. And oh, it was just amazing the love that people had for Christ. In Revelations, it says, uh, chapter 12, it says, they were overcomers by the word of their testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. And they loved not their lives unto death. They didn't care about, I mean, yeah, we want to live. We want, I want to watch my great-grandbaby grow and my grandchildren. I want to see Nicholas get married and have children. I mean, I want to see my granddaughter have another baby. I have so many hopes and dreams. But if they come to me and ask me, will you die for Christ or will you renounce Christ and live? I said, you better go ahead and take me because there ain't no way I'm going to shut up. No way am I going to stop preaching about Jesus. No, my children know this. You know, if, if they come against my children, I cannot say, uh, okay, don't, don't hurt them. I, I, I'll denounce Christ. No, I won't. Because my children need to get right with God. They need to be ready and prepared when that time comes. The Bible says there is an appointed time and nothing's going to stop it. If I would have lost my soul for my children 
and they rejected Christ anyway, what's that going to do for me? I'll be burning in hell with everybody else. And that's not going to happen. I will die for my babies. But if they give me that choice, I, I, I can't take it. I will not take it. But anyways, I don't know how long I've been preaching, but I'll tell you what, I love the Lord. Let me just finish this one little bit right here. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. They're talking about when the mark of the beast comes. When I mean, they're already talking about it. It's already in motion. There's no way that no one's going to stop it. But nobody cares. You know why? Because the devil has deceived the human beings into getting all kinds of tattoos. I mean, they're addicted to getting tattoos. Even on their faces and their bodies and their backs. and their I mean, the whole body covered with tattoos. You know why? Because we are the image. We are made in the image and in the likeness of Jesus Christ. We are made in his image. And Satan and he wants to cover you up. That way he knows that you're not one of God's. You're one of his. Yep. Yep. There are people who are tattooed all over and have given their lives to Christ. And they're out there preaching about it. Oh, my goodness. You know, I, it just makes me sick. Every time I see my children with another one. And I go to my knees and I fight that devil with all that's within me. Oh, my goodness. My goodness. But there's nothing I can do. I step back and I say, okay, God, I gave you my request. Now I trust you. I trust you, God, to take care of my babies. To deliver them from this world. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm, 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 mm. The Bible says in Revelation 13, no man shall be able to buy or sell with the mark. Have you noticed what they're doing right now with the money? Yeah, they're not accepting change. I mean, there's a few places that still give you change, but there's no change, no coins. And uh, they're pushing the credit card and, and uh, you know, all kinds of this stuff, the debit cards. Every, there's no checks anymore. I mean, I don't, I don't know anybody that writes checks anymore. But they are pushing, the government's pushing for a cashless society. And the mark of the beast is going to come because it's for positive identification. And it has to be implanted in your hand or in your head so that they can scan it. Like they do your temperature. When you go to the doctors, what's the first thing they do? Let me check your temperature. Am I right? Uh-huh. And uh, anyways, and then you go to use that credit card. You got to use your hand to push it in there, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Anyways, they're pushing for a cashless society. And then uh, when they got that, they're going to come up with the plan that they are got right now. That it's for positive identification and that's for insurance purposes. Because if you go to the hospital and you're unconscious, they can't ask you, you know, uh, who's your insurance? Who do you have insurance with? Uh, uh, you know, what's your name? What's your social security number? You got to have a social security number for everything. All about the numbers, baby. Yep. It's all about numbers. And so, anyway, they're, they're saying that they can't do nothing with you. They can't operate. They can't touch you. They can't do anything until they know who you are and what you're allergic to. So, they're pushing for this insurance thing. And the insurance thing is going to come from the, yeah, the chip. It's a, a little tiny chip, like a seed, that has everything about you in it. I mean, it's... um. What do they call it? Digitized. 
Everything about you is digitized. That means it's made really, 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 really small. And everything about you, uh, the blood type you are, this and that, uh, temperature, I mean, everything, everything, the color of your real eyes, you know, what you look like before surgery, uh, you know, everything. And so all they got to do is just go like that, zoom, and it's positive identification. You can't come in with somebody else's IDs. Nope. You can't use somebody else's social security number. Nope. It's got to be inside and it won't come out because they said that it's got to work with like a battery. Uh, they said they spent $1.2 million on trying to find out how to put this in you and keep it in you because they can't keep taking it out and charging it up. So $1.2 million, they found out there's only two places in the, in the whole body that this can be placed. And it's in the forehead or in the back of the right hand, I believe. But listen to this and, I'll, and then I'll close. It's in Revelation 13. Revelation 13. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both spoke, uh, speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Okay, when you go into Walmart and you want to pay for your bill, right? You use a credit card or cash, but you're using your hand to do all this, right? Right? Okay. And uh, it says it deceives you. Mm -hmm. Does that thing not talk to you? It says, uh, do you want to use this or do you want to use that? Okay. Uh, will you use cash or whatever? And then if you use a, the credit card, follow the instructions on that little thing. And then when you're done, it says, have a nice day or goodbye or something like that. And then when you talk to people on the phone, you call in the doctor, you call in somebody, what do you get? Somebody that's got to tell you 30 minutes of what's going on in the doctor's office about the COVID, about what they're doing. And if you want to join and you want to be a member I mean, it's, it's all about the robots, the cashier society. And then it says uh, that the image should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the beast to be killed. He causes all, both small and great. You don't care what you are. Satan does not care if you have a billion trillion dollars in the bank. You hear me? He doesn't care. He doesn't care if you're fat or skinny, ugly or beautiful. Sexy ain't going to get you into heaven. No way. It's not. And uh, being a handsome guy with all the right moves and everything is not going to get you into heaven. Doesn't matter what you look like or how much money you have in the bank or how close you think you are to God. It's not going to keep you from receiving this mark. It says, Causes many as we not worship the beast. Okay, he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond. That means free out here or behind the bars. Yep, they're going to have to do it too. It don't matter where you are. You have to take this chip. It says uh, free or bond to receive a mark on their right hand. Or in their foreheads. Huh. And the guy that told us all about this, he said that uh, if you would have just, if they, because if they, he was the chief engineer of General Electric. And the government came to them and talked to them about building a, a microchip that would fit into a woman's severed spine. It was cut in half. And to produce it, to make movement, you know, because when you, when you're, uh, you're paralyzed, you have no movement, you can't do nothing. And so it did it. Hands moved, feet moved, but he said that they did not write about all the complications that woman had because they don't want you to know about the bad stuff. 
Just like the news don't want you to know about the bad stuff that's going on. They're going to tell you only what the producers allow them to tell you. And they've got a telecomp. Yeah, just like in prison. You send a letter, they don't get to hold it. You have to read it through a telecomp, you know? And uh, so that's the same way with the news reporters. They read what they're looking at. They, I don't know if they get a chance to look at it or whatever. Uh, and that no one, no one may be able to buy or sell without this mark. Now, they were uh, talking about the mark. And a lot of people think it's going to be like a tattoo because the devil has deceased people into getting all these tattoos. They're used to the needles and all that stuff. But no, it's not going to be a tattoo, but it will be a needle. And it will be implanted in you. They're going to stick it in your head or your forehead. Some people will be proud to have this because, you know, they're proud to have those tattoos and everything. That makes them a man or a woman or cool, you know, super duper whatever. I don't speak their language anymore. But anyways... So people get these tattoos and stuff and they're not going to think nothing bad about it. But you know what? You won't be able to see it. Nope. They won't be able to know if you have it or not. They'll be turning people in that don't have it. Oh, they'll turn you in quickly because as soon as they receive that mark, everything about them changes. They're not the sweet, innocent, funny little girl anymore. No. They're like a spy looking out for the devil. Making sure that everybody's getting caught. Anyways, I told you I would close. So, the mark, uh, the man that told us about this, he said that, oh, it's just the mark. Okay, I didn't, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. But the Lord spoke to him and said, go deeper. He said it's in the old concordance. And nobody's got that concordance anymore because they took it out. They got new concordances. Uh, he said it was in the Strong's Concordance. And guess what? I got one. My mother and father bought it in 1987 for my birthday. And I wasn't even saved yet. But God wanted her to buy that for me. Because he knew that once I got saved, I would study out that word. And I studied that before he even spoke about it. But I studied it more when he said it. He said that in the Strong's Concordance, it says, Chick my stigma. Chick my stigma. Chick my stigma means to stick, to prick, to inject. And he said, How did John the Revelator see over 2,000 years ago that this was going to come to pass? That this is what they were going to do? He said, God, get, that's why they call him the Revelator. He was letting us know way before it even happened. And if you read this Bible, whoo, guess what? You'll know too. You'll know too. But anyways, let's close. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I have spoke my heart to these people, Lord God. Again, I didn't preach what I was studying, but I preached something that you laid on my heart and gave me the scriptures for. Wow. Thank you, God. I just love you. I love the Holy Ghost. Thank you, God. God, I ask that you touch these people. Every ear that has heard me, Lord, I ask that they receive the what the Spirit was saying, Lord God, and that it changes them within. Bring conviction, deep, strong conviction into their hearts, Lord, into their minds and into their souls. God, I love you for every child, every grown-up, for every person. I don't care if they're a sinner or a saint, Lord God. Help them, Lord, to search the scriptures more and deeper that they might get a greater relationship with you. Oh, Lord, don't let us be left behind. Oh, Lord, don't let us be left behind. I love you and praise you and thank you for what you've done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 I love you guys. If I didn't love you, I'm sorry for being so loud. I don't want to tell you, you know, I never thought nothing about it, but somebody told me that I was too loud and that I need to calm it down. So anyways, um, uh, I just love you and it's my job to warn you, to warn the wicked of their wicked ways. Not only that, 
we need to warn each other. Saints need to warn each other. You know, wake up. It's time to get closer to God. I love you all. Have a great Sunday, and God bless you.